Hello, everyone. Welcome to Peace of Authenticity Podcast. I'm Aubrey. And I'm Jordan. And we are the Andersons. In 2020, the Lord really challenged us on starting our own podcast. And so we invite you to join us on the journey of following Jesus every day. So let's grow together and learn together. (laughs) What's up, everybody? Hello. Um, I know we always say this for the end, but um, I was listening to another podcast and I thought it was really cool. She just thanked everybody that was listening. And honestly, we're so thankful for you listening and like going on these journeys with us because honestly, it's like really cool to get to hear back from you guys. Um, things that the Lord has shown you through what y'all have heard, yeah. even the Lord show us. And it really just become this conversation of, of growing together and falling in love with the word of God and so we're just super thankful yeah yeah for sure um so i hope that you guys have had opportunities if our our last episode was so cool when we got to talk about shalom and i hope that i think the questions that we asked at the end was kind of like you know asking the holy spirit to show you what Mm -hmm. your shalom was like and um it, it means so much more than just the word peace it's all encompassing it's it's like well-being it's everything like that so i hope i hope that you guys all had the opportunity to ask the lord about that spend some time with the lord to get that shalom on point Mm -hmm. yeah it honestly so we're going to talk about a place slash person um where he lived where we went to visit in israel and kind of go into this thing but it actually didn't start so much with wanting to talk about this Bible character. It's honestly just the Lord always convicting and teaching us things. Yeah. And then we see those connections with um, certain places that we went to in Israel. So it's been really fun. Yeah. Yeah. And so you can introduce, oh, if, unless you want to say more. Yeah. No, I, I was just going to say, we're, like, we're, we're going to, we're going to dive in on this. And, and the thing that I like about doing the, this podcast is we, we like to be led by the spirit every week and so like we might even have a plan on what we're gonna you know we're praying about what to do next Mm -hmm. next week whenever we record and everything like that and then at you know the day before all of a sudden you know the lord would just go hey you need to talk about this because maybe it's something that we're struggling with ourselves Um, that's usually the case yeah if we're gonna be honest (laughs) yeah for sure and so what what we decided to dive in on today was um This might hurt a lot of people. It it might like be like a shot to the gut because um, it it definitely is to me at times. But basically what we want to unpack is do we really know the difference between right and wrong, right? And how do you know that the direction that you're walking, the way that you're leading your family – the ministry that you do, the job that you work, everything like that. How do you know that something is right, that you're headed in the right direction and everything is the way that it's supposed to be? Mm. Like I hear this saying all the time. So if you've said it, I'm sorry, but I hate this saying. (laughs) It is your truth. Yeah. Just, just, you know what? You have your truth. Listen, there ain't no my truth. There ain't no Aubrey's truth. There is the truth. And usually the truth really hurts, but it also sets us free. Yeah. Um, And usually the things that hurt us the most do the best for us most of the time. So, yeah, let's not own our truth in this podcast. Let's actually own the truth of the (laughs) Word of God. And so um, the person that we're going to be talking about today is Samson. Yeah. And Samson is a mess. Like, literally, when you read his story, which I'm sure most everybody has, everybody knows about the strong Samson with the long hair, okay? Everyone knows Samson and the Delilah, but you did not know there was like eight other chicks before Delilah, did you? And also that he picked fights with like thousands of Philistines at the same time, mostly, and there were fires, and it was just insane. Because Samson, um, he owned his truth. And in the Bible, your truth, usually that saying that I told you I hated earlier, what is your truth? The Bible words it as 
they did what was right in their own eyes. And so yeah. <laughs> we're going to go a little, um, a little in depth with that saying exactly, because whenever we started looking up doing what was right in our own eyes, there are so many scriptures in Proverbs specifically, which has to do a lot with wisdom, literally saying that it is stupid <laughs> to do what is right in your own eyes. Yeah, for sure. Because the, the more you live and the more that you sit in shalom and the more time you spend with the Lord, you're realizing that when you do what's right in your own eyes, it's usually wrong. And you should really, I don't know, not trust yourself ever initially. Always go to the Lord because my truth is not the truth. Yeah. It's just not. Yeah. You know? Well, I think that we can all understand that there's there, one of my one of my favorite verses in Scripture is there's a way in in which seems right to a man, but it leads to destruction. Mm-hmm. So that makes me take a step back and go, okay, so if this if what I'm walking out right now seems right and it feels right, that doesn't necessarily mean that it's right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It means that I could possibly end up leading myself into destruction because the difference between my right is is different than the Lord's right. Mm-hmm. Right? Just like my truth or your truth. Now, I, I want to say this too. In in every story, every situation that we walk into, there are multiple sides to the story. Oh yeah. And and I w- I won't say like I mean, for instance, if Jordan and I get into an argument and she feels like I'm acting a certain type of way, and mm-hmm. I feel like I'm, you know, she's acting a certain type of way, and we're in opposition to each other. It doesn't necessarily mean that either one of us yeah. is wrong, mm-hmm. right? But the truth is, we're probably both wrong, mm-hmm. right? If if you're asking the Lord, both of us are doing something wrong that's causing strife. But in my opinion, you're wrong, and in your opinion, I'm wrong, mm-hmm. right? So yeah, my truth. Y- your is that- <laughs> truth is that you, the way in which seems right to you, says that Aubrey's wrong mm-hmm. because he said this or he did that. And in my opinion, my way is like this isn't right. You know, she needs to apologize. Or you know, what I mean, like we. Yeah, well, let's we, not point the finger. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah. Well, we we make up all these things, and when yeah. we say, oh, "Well, this is what's right. This is what's wrong." Yeah. But but really, and we act like we know. Like, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah. And so we we start off this story of Samson, and and I love this. I love the story, and I want to encourage you guys. Judges thirteen through sixteen. Yeah, right? that is the Samson story. Is, is the whole thing? Now, open your Bible, start reading in Judges thirteen, and and all the way through sixteen. That's the whole story will, of Samson. You will read the whole poo You'll, show that is Samson's life. <laughs> you will read a lot of nonsense, but. <laughs> So I, I love this though because I want to start reading in in verse or chapter fourteen right now. Yeah, because chapter fourteen already highlights for us where Samson's heart is, and yeah. and this matters because you can think that you're right and everything can seem right, and I would even say even you think the position of your heart is right, but it's still wrong. And you can't see it because maybe you're dealing with pride or maybe you're yeah. dealing with lust or maybe you're dealing with one of these other things you won't even know. So in, in chapter 14, it tells us one day when Samson was in Timnah, one of the Philistine women caught his eye. Okay, so let's let's, you know, focus in on that right there. It's already giving us there's there's a way in which seems right to a man. Right. Like in, in his eyes, he thought it was right. So he. She caught his eye, so he probably is dealing with some lust issues. And oh so my gosh, if you two, read a story, you know that for a complete fact. <laughs> but if you haven't read it yet, you don't know. So this Stay is a tuned. this is a very good detail that lets you know that Samson um, it probably has lust issues. And if this if this woman caught his eye, I, I imagine she was very pretty and everything, but she was still a Philistine, right? Which but yeah, Jews were not allowed. The Lord specifically to told the, the children of Israel not to mix with the other with the people of the land. Yeah, and he said that. So, but you know, it was you yeah. Know, he saw her with his eye, and it caught his eyes. So. Yeah. So this chick is catching Samson's eye right now, right? And so he goes home and he tells his parents. He says, "A young Philistine woman in Timnah caught my eye. I want to marry her. Go get her for me." Okay, boss. Listen. This is this is completely against custom, right? In the is in the in the Hebrew custom, most marriages were arranged 
And so the parents would talk to other parents and then all of a sudden, boom. And, you know, people might be going, oh, that's just crazy that people have no rights. Listen, that's just the way things, that's the way things were done. That's, that's how they were. So Samson is already going against and standing up and being disobedient and, and also not honoring his parents. How many of you know, right, that the Bible says that if you want to live a long life on the earth, you will honor your father and mother. Samson's not doing this right now. So the verse three tells us his father and mother objected. Isn't there even one woman in our tribe or among all the Israelites that you could marry? They asked him, why must you go? uh, Why must you go to the pagan Philistines to find a wife? But Samson told his father, get her for me. She looks good to me. His father and mother didn't realize that the Lord was at work in this and creating an opportunity to work against the Philistines who ruled um, over Israel at the time. So a different translation actually yeah. says, go get her for me. She is right in my eyes. Yeah. Yeah. So the the ESV version, I, I think I read this in the NLT. Oh, so yeah, in yeah. the ESV version, it says that go get her for me for she is right in my eyes. And ESV is one of the best just because it's actually very literal to what the Hebrew and Greek say. So yeah, that's my yeah, it's a, it's a good translation. So um, so we, we've we already see Samson, right? He's he's defying the one of the rules that the Lord gave Israel. Mm-hmm. So he's wrong there. He's bossing his parents around. He's not honoring his parents. And then we see for the first time that he's saying, I don't care. Forget your customs. Forget honor. Forget all this stuff. She is right in my eyes. Mm -hmm. Right? So, and, and I would venture to say that he wasn't, he probably wasn't even doing it out of a, you know, since to just be a brat. He was just like, this is what I want. This is what I believe I want. I really think it's right. Yeah. It had become a cycle in his life to do things right in his own eyes because he was not building a relationship with the Lord, Mm. which let's back it up a little bit. He was actually dedicated to the Lord. An angel came to his mother and said, your son's going to be a Nazarite. And what a Nazarite is, it's somebody that is like bound in this covenant with the Lord where they can't cut their hair. They can't drink wine. They can't even walk in a, in a, um, vine like what is it a vineyard yeah remember that and they can't be around anything dead i mean there's so many different things to this nazarite vow and once you read samson's story you're going to realize that he actually breaks every single nazarite rule and um it's it's interesting because when we were in israel uh brad set us up kind of on a hill area and we could see the exact place where samson's village was it was over by the ikea i think we've talked about the ikea, IKEA yeah before. there's an ikea in israel. <laughs> and then you could see there was a there was a deep valley Um, And then it went up and you could actually see the coast. And the coast where the Mediterranean Sea is, is where the Philistines were. So it was just so crazy because whenever Brad was reading the story of Samson, he's like, so Samson was here, over here in his village. And then he walked way over there. And you could just see it in your vision. It was the coolest thing ever. You could actually see where Timna was, where his woman that was right in his own eyes was situated in the Philistine city. And um, it was just really cool to actually visualize that. Mm -hmm. And it's just... There, there was nothing like it to actually sit there. And the thing about his village, Brad was saying, is that when you can tell it's a Jewish village when um, they're digging you know, for bones, the archaeologists are trying to find different things about this town. They did not find one pig bone, which means that was a legit Jewish village because yeah. they don't eat pig. And so this is very important to them. Um, that's why his mother and father was like, please don't do this to our family and don't marry a pagan because we don't even eat, we haven't even eaten one pig in our life. You know, all these different things are very strict about it. And Samson's like, ah, that's all right. She's right in my own eyes. So that's all that matters. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Well, so if if you continue reading into the story of Samson, you, you will develop, you will notice that there is a pattern of Samson time and time again, doing what was right in his own eyes. And now listen, the Bible does say that the Lord rose Samson up to be the judge of his people like he was supposed to be leading well. But instead, the only person that he was leading well, actually the only person he was leading at all was himself. He and didn't care well. about anybody else. He didn't do he didn't do anything like any of the other judges did. He wasn't he wasn't being a role model. He was extremely selfish. Yeah, extremely selfish individual. But I mean, you know, and I remember growing up in church, 
you know, we would color pictures of Samson with his in big Sunday old school. Muscles. Yeah, with his big muscles, and we talk about how he killed all the Philistines with the jawbone of a donkey, and you know when, and and all the the supernatural things he did. But I don't ever remember being told as a kid. I thought Samson was a really cool Bible character. Like, oh yeah, like I'm, I want to be like Samson. I want to be, <laughs> be strong. But it's like, dude, this guy was ratchet. Yeah. You know, he was he was terrible. <laughs> And, you know, you think about it, he forced his parents to arrange a marriage outside of their custom. His parents were knowingly breaking the Hebrewic covenant to go and arrange this marriage with with this Philistine woman. But they did it because he was so insistent, because it was right in his own eyes. And forget what anybody else has to say, because I'm right. I don't know if you've ever been in a position like that before where you were like, I, you know, you're going full steam ahead thinking that you're right every step of the way. And then somewhere along the way, you finally get the revelation that maybe I'm not as right as I thought I was in the maybe beginning. I shouldn't always follow yeah. my heart, yeah. what most people say. Yeah. And so, so we, we go on this journey with Samson and, um, I want to encourage all you guys to read it. We don't have time in this podcast yeah. to talk about the whole thing, but I want to fast forward to the very end, uh, the Philistines who, you know, Samson killed a great number of them and they finally, they cut his hair and he loses all of his strength. And um, in chapter 16, he's literally imprisoned and they gouge out his eyes. Mm -hmm. And they make him push a, a mill like where they... They crushed. They're laughing at him. Yeah, they're laughing. He he became a laughing stock. He went from what many of us would know as like a Marvel superhero, a comic book superhero. Samson went from that to a laughing stock, and the Philistines decided to throw a big party because they finally captured Samson, the one that had been a thorn in their side for all these years. Mm -hmm. They finally catch Samson. But here's one thing that we have to notice about Samson that we have to take note of is this comes from chapter 16 and it's it's in verse 28 but before i say that he was he was literally chained he, he they gouged out his eyes so he's obviously blind mm-hmm. um and they were about to throw this party so that all these top dog philistines could come and see um that and and it was actually a celebration to Dagon their their god um, because they conquered Samson. And Samson asked to be put between the two main pillars that were holding up this Colosseum, I'm guessing is what they were under. Um, but notice this prayer, right? Because this prayer is very strategic mm-hmm. for understanding um, where the way that seems right to a man will lead to destruction is because in verse 28, it says, Then Samson prayed to the Lord, Sovereign Lord, remember me again. O oh God, please strengthen me just one more time. With one blow, let me pay back the Philistines for the loss of my two eyes. Okay? So I think if you go back and you read through the story, Samson's eyes were exactly the problem. He, that was like, those were not his so yes his physical eyes so he could see right but if he actually did have a lustful spirit he needed his eyes and if you could tell there are a lot of women that go throughout his story including Delilah who's the one that figured out his weakness anyways but his selfish ambitions is what and they took that the Philistines took that from him so he literally prayed to the Lord Lord, give me my strength one more time so I can kill all these people for taking away my control over my own life. Mm -hmm. Really. It didn't have anything about glorifying the Lord. It didn't have... Yeah. He he didn't say like, Lord, let me take out these Philistines so that they will know that there's a God, God, you know, that there's a God in Israel or anything like that. It was literally, you look at the motive of his prayer. The motive of his prayer was revenge. It had nothing to do with the Lord whatsoever. 
And so we we wanted to kind of highlight this story. And if, if you guys, um, Brad Gray was on our podcast, mm-hmm. and he's also the one that led our trip into Israel. He wrote a book called Make Your Mark. It's so And, and it's good. about this very story that we're talking about. It's, yeah. it's about the story of Samson and what we can learn from it. I want to encourage all you guys to go and get that book from Brad. Um, it, it, it's an incredible book, mm-hmm. and, and it basically highlights this whole story and breaks it down. And, but one thing that you have to understand is that Samson thought that he was doing what was right the whole time and look where it led him you know and and it kind of even the story of samson kind of even highlights to me that most of the time prideful people and people that are are struggling with all sorts of things especially pride we talked about it on the podcast before like when when you um when you're walking in pride, you literally put yourself in opposition to the Lord because the Lord despises pride. He opposes the proud, as the Bible says. Mm -hmm. And so when, when Samson is doing all of this stuff, I imagine he's, he's so prideful throughout the whole thing. And he gets humbled at the very end of the story. And he cries out to God and he says, God, please remember me. And let me get revenge for my two eyes. It, it just it just shows me this is what happens when you let selfish ambition, when you let pride, when you let all of these things continue to move you along a certain path, you end at destruction. Mm. I just, it's so sad too. Aubrey, can you go to um, chapter 13, just verse mm. 1? Yeah. This is before Samson was born. This is the very first verse starting Samson's life. And, and it's a few more verses down um, before he's actually born. But this is verse 1 in Judges 13. Mm. Again, the Israelites did evil in the Lord's sight. So the Lord handed them over to the Philistines who oppressed them for 40 years. And so if you listen to, if you read Judges, it's literally a circle of events. It just keeps going back and forth. The Israelites did what was evil in the Lord's sight. They are under turmoil by the Philistines or whoever the heck else, you know, took them over that are pagans. And there is a judge that comes to help deliver them. And so yet again, the Israelites did what was wrong in the sight of the Lord, did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, and comes Samson. And I'm telling you right now, it is insane because Samson, his whole life, did what was right in his own eyes, which is evil in the sight of the Lord. Yeah. And what happens after Samson dies? It says in um, Judges, where did I write it? Judges 17 and Judges 21, it'll say that um, Israel still had had no king and they did what was right in their own eyes. And I'm telling you, the last few chapters of Judges after Samson, who was the last judge, died, it is dark and it is horrible there's so much death there's so much murder so much destruction because everyone did what was right in their own eyes because the person they looked up to the most did that his whole life yeah well so what what we have to understand about the story of samson is i literally grew up thinking that in the last moments of samson's life when he pushed those pillars and the Colosseum collapsed and the bible says that he killed more philistines that day than he had previously, which if you go back and read the he story, killed he, he, killed a, he killed a lot of them. For a guy and that's not supposed to be around dead with, bodies, he killed a whole lot of people. <laughs> he killed a whole lot of people with the jawbone of a donkey, just, you which know. Which is a dead animal which that he shouldn't animal. have been touching. Yeah. But it's so fine. <laughs> you could go back and read that, read all that stuff for yourself. And so, and I used to think, man, that, man, that's so cool that, that God redeemed him in that moment and he was able to kill all those Philistines. But, you know, now I'm sitting here thinking, that's a sad end to a story. Yeah. Because I I don't I don't necessarily think that he saved them. I mean, he killed a lot of Philistines that day, but they still ruled over yeah, they the were Israelites. Back. They were like You know what I mean? Like like it, like he didn't really gain anything. Like yeah, he killed a whole bunch of people all at once, but at the same time it's such a sad story because you're going this guy is literally everything. I remember reading comic books as a kid thinking, 
man, it would be so cool to be given superpowers, you know? And we know that the Bible says that Samson had the strength of 10 men or something like that. Like it was ridiculous. Like he was, he was basically a walking superhero and how he chose to walk out his story, even though he believed that he was right, ultimately led to his destruction. And so I would even venture to say that when Jesus is teaching in the New Testament and he says that if your eye causes you to sin, pluck it out because of this very story of Samson, he, he was caught so deep into sin that, and he lost both eyes. Mm -hmm. And so he literally said, Lord, give me those eyes back. And as Jordan was saying just a second ago, if you read chapter 17, the people continued to do what was what was right in their own eyes. Never at any point did any of these people stop and go, am I doing what God says is right? No, they just continue to do what was right. And if you read Judges 17, 18, 19, 20, uh, I think it was, they go to 21, 22, uh, 23, something like that. Anyway, just keep reading. These are the darkest stories. When we were in Israel, they literally told us that the end of Judges, those chapters after Samson, are the darkest period of Israel's history. Yep. The darkest. So what did Samson ultimately do? Nothing. He continued. He started, well, he didn't start, but he just continued a path of doing what was only right in his eyes. Mm -hmm. And that cycle continued after he was gone. Yeah. So... The question that, that we wanted to raise by doing this podcast today was simply by asking the question, how many of us on a daily basis are doing what's right in our own eyes or are we literally subjecting or, or uh, I would even say laying down every single one of our opinions, our thoughts, our actions before the throne of God and asking the Lord to show you what is right. Because if the Bible teaches us anything, it teaches me that I can't know what is possibly right. And even though it feels right, I could mm -hmm. still end up in destruction just like Samson. Oh yeah, yeah. Um this might seem like I'm turning it, but it all connects. The Lord just showed this to me. So um, our son, Gray, loves Christian rap. So Aubrey and I get to listen to Christian rap at yeah. least three hours out of the day. <laughs> I would say at least. Probably. And there's a song by KB. And I had heard this song, I'm not even kidding, probably a hundred times. Yeah. And yesterday, Aubrey and I were headed to see some friends. And we were talking a little bit about you know what we were going to say in the podcast, what the Lord was showing us. And I heard, and of course the background was Christian rap, what a surprise. And I heard a line in this song that I had never really heard before. And it said, when I see weak, I pray to God that I see me. And Samson was the strongest man hmm. in all the world in that time for sure. And probably still to this day. And he was so bent on his will and what he wanted and he saw himself as strong and he saw himself as able and he saw himself right in his own eyes which was evil in the sight of the lord but i pray that when i see weak i pray to god that i see me because mm. those that are humble we humble ourselves and we look to god because he is the ultimate eyes for for me because i can't trust myself to know yeah. truth Right. I just can't because my feelings ask Aubrey sometimes I'm in a bad mood and I don't even know why sometimes I'm in a great mood and I don't even know why we don't understand our emotions and our feelings so I cannot mm -hmm. trust what I say is truth I can trust what I read in the word of God and what I hear from the Lord and that is what I can trust and I can know full and well that I can humble myself to the Lord and I can look to him and know that that is truth yeah. So here's just a little taste of what we're talking about, oh, right? Oh, the problem. Mm -hmm. So, uh, if like literally, if you just Google the way which seems right or right in your own eyes or anything like yeah. that, you'll come across so many Bible verses. Mostly so Proverbs. Everybody loves Proverbs, right? Everybody loves Solomon. Um, we'll talk so, about him another time. Yeah. So here you go. 
Proverbs twelve fifteen. Fools think that their own way is right, but the wise listen to others. The story of Samson, Samson literally listened to nobody but Samson. Exactly. He didn't even listen his to parents his parents. His parents tried to push back on him. He wasn't having it. Wise people always listen to others. Okay, so here's, what's it, Proverbs 21? Two. Two. All right. People may be right in their own eyes, but the Lord examines their heart. Mm. The Lord is more pleased when we do what is right and just than when we offer him sacrifices. Mm. You know, it makes me think like Samson, the, the Lord had a plan. We, we read it a second ago. Like even though Samson was moving into disobedience, God still, what the Bible says, what his parents didn't know, that God still had a plan to use it for his purposes, right? But Proverbs is saying that the Lord is more pleased when we do what is right which, how do we do that? We, we let the Lord examine our heart and we move from there because people may be right in their own eyes. So if the Lord wants us to do what is right, it's literally saying the Lord wants us to ask him what is right, to be led by him. And so here's another Proverbs for you. Proverbs 26, what is it? 12. 12, yep. Do you see a person wise in their own eyes? There is more hope for a fool than for them. That makes me feel better because sometimes I feel like a fool. <laughs> no, but think about it. Think about it. Like even in marriage or, or any type of relationship, how many times have you pit yourself against somebody and you go, I'm not going to do this until they apologize or I'm not, I'm not in the wrong. I have nothing to apologize for. Blah, 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 blah. And then you're literally saying when you see yourself being right in your own eyes, Solomon is literally saying that there is more hope for a fool than for you. There's, it's it's mind blowing because I've been in situations where there's been family discord or there's been strife in, in certain situations or like in a marriage when a husband and wife oh well he always does this and she always does this and blah 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 blah, blah. we could go we could keep going around and around like a dog chasing its tail. But the simple fact of the matter is when you position yourself in such a way that says, I know I'm right, so I refuse to humble myself, you're not right. It says you, you can be in a position to be right, but as long as you continue to think that you're right and somebody else is wrong, then your heart position has changed and you're no longer right because you're not doing anything. Remember last week we talked about being a peacemaker versus mm -hmm. a peacekeeper. If you position yourself in such a way to say, I'm right, so I'm not going to apologize. I'm not going to do anything. I'm just going to stand here until everybody else realizes I'm right. There's more hope for a fool than and for you. I know we've talked about this uh, statement before because it was a big statement in ancient Israel, but an eye for an eye. And that means what they take from me, I can take from them. Mm. And that is, of course, not the way that we're supposed to live. You know, it makes sense to not forgive someone that did something super horrible to you. They're not sorry for it. Why in the world would you forgive them? Right? But are you looking through the eyes of the Lord? Or are you looking through your own eyes? Mm. Because our own eyes say an eye for an eye. Yeah. Human nature says. Yeah. They and owe me. You know, even all these things going on in America where, like, the pronouns and things like that, the he, she, they, them, their, all the things, that is their truth and they're living right in their own eyes. Mm -hmm. And there is love, but there is also stating the truth of what the Lord sees evil in his eyes. And not what you see evil in your eyes and not rebuking and not... So we have to find a common... Not a common, but a... But I can't think of the words for it. We have got to have our eyes on the Lord because he will show us exactly what we need to do in these times. Because I've seen a lot of hate rise up. Even people that are technically right, but it's like said in hate, that's yeah. still not right. You're doing things right in your own eyes. Yeah. So. Or if you know that somebody is in sin... Maybe you flat out caught that person in sin, 
But the second that you confront and position yourself to, well, this seems right, this is what I need to do, then, then, then you're wrong. Because um, that, what, if, what, if the Lord, what if the Lord had you in a, in a position to witness somebody's sin so that you could love them to the point where they realize that what they're doing is wrong. Not mm -hmm. nobody ever gets to where you, nobody ever gets to a place of healing by you pointing fingers mm -hmm. and saying that's what bothers me about where we're at in America today is you have all these different news channels that are pointing the finger at other people and saying oh these people suck these people these people are from hell these people are listen like w w that's that's not supposed to be the position of our heart and you can literally chase your right thinking all the way into destruction if you want to oh yeah and if you refuse to humble yourself even if your position is right you're still wrong because god honors humility god loves humility he does he he opposes the proud and it just it just kind of bugs me because we're sitting here going, man, and there's been so many times in my life where I thought, man, I, no, I'm right. Like, uh, this has to be the way. I, I think about men that literally put more effort into their jobs and into their career than they do into their children. And, they're, and, and it might be for the right reasons, right? Like, they might be sitting here going, all I have to do is grind through this season and then my family will be set up for success on the back end. But that's still leading to a destruction because what if by the time you're about to get on that back end, your your wife and kids want nothing to do with you anymore? You know what I'm saying? Like it might seem right to you, but it can lead to your destruction. That's why every every attitude, every decision that we make, every action that we make has consequences and it matters. That's why we're supposed to be led by the Spirit in everything that we do. Everything. Mm -hmm. Because every action has a what does it say has a equal and opposite, opposite reaction. reaction, right? That even goes spiritually. Everything that you do, even if you're doing something you feel like out of a good heart, if the Lord is not leading you to do it, then you don't have the ability to say what's right and what's wrong. The Lord is the ultimate judge, not me, not yeah. anybody. It's a lot of pressure off if you think about it. Yeah, it is. And so <laughs> you, you sit there and it's like, okay, so, so what, what are we getting at? We're getting at that there are so many stories in, in the Bible that, that we, we could talk about where we see these people that are doing what they absolutely believe is right and it's destructive. So what does that mean for us? That's why Jesus says it's for your benefit that I go and be with the Father because I'm going to send you the helper. I'm going to send you the comforter and he's going to guide you into all truth. If I could guide myself into all truth, then I why? wouldn't have needed the yeah. Holy Spirit. And Jesus could have stayed here partying with the 12 disciples for all of eternity. I don't know. But Jesus says... The Comforter, the Holy Spirit will guide you into all truth. Samson thought he could guide himself into all truth. At times, David, King David, a man after God's own heart, thought he could guide himself into what was right. But we, we know through listening to the teachings of Jesus that we can't. We can't. Mm -hmm. we, we need the Holy Spirit. So I here's my challenge for at the end of this podcast is I would I would like for every person that's listening to this podcast today to examine every single thing that you do even if you think it's something small but you're like oh well how many how many times have you have you seen somebody just go oh well we got to do this with our kids or we got to do that we got to go to all these ball games we got to do all this stuff because this is what it takes to to raise a family in the modern world or whatever how many of those things were weighed against, Lord, is this what we're supposed to be doing or is this what everybody else is doing? You know what I mean? How many of those things, you, it might seem right to you right now, mm -hmm. but are you really, just because you show up to all your kids' ball games or you go and do all these things, are you really giving them the, your, your best foot forward? And is it, is it not more important to raise them up into 
the spiritual things of the Lord rather than, oh, well, I was at every ball game that they ever had. You know what I mean? It seemed right to you then, but, you know, could that time, could my time have been spent more with the Lord and less running around doing all these activities? I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's a challenge. That's what we have to ask ourselves. Are we doing everything that we possibly can to raise gray up in the admiration of the Lord, as the Bible says? Are, are we? To, every one of us have to weigh these things. So then you put it all up in here and you say, okay, Lord, I'm weighing all of these things. So what's right and what has just seemed right? Mm -hmm. And I would be interested to see what those answers are. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so we just challenge you to step back and look at the things going on. Um, sometimes the Lord will bring up to me certain things and be like, does that have eternal value? Mm. Um, and you know, honestly, a lot of people are like, well, you don't have to ask the Lord about everything. There's some small things that you probably do. I understand that for sure. I mean, Lord, should I go number one right now? You know what I mean? <laughs> things like that. But, <laughs> but I would say almost every decision that weighs decently like I, I honestly like just feel like better safe than sorry I'm gonna make sure that I'm doing right in the eyes of the Lord even mm -hmm. if he's like you don't have to ask me about that you can go to the bathroom I don't ask the Lord if I can go to the bathroom by the way there's some for some reason why I thought of it I don't know it's just a weird thought but um you know I'd say rather safe than sorry you know yeah like, and not think that I always know the best answer because I know I don't so yeah I've literally had conversations out. with people where they were like well, this door opened and I just knew that it had to be the Lord, so I walked through it. Not every door that opens to you is oh, yeah. from the Lord. Yeah. I, I, I like to use this example because when, when Jesus was being tempted in the wilderness, the enemy, it said, took him up on the high point, right, of, his, of the temple mm -hmm. and, and said, it showed him all the kingdoms of the world. And he said, I will give you all of this. If you bow down and worship me. So not everything prosperity, not every door that opens is the Lord going, oh, hey, why don't you come and walk and do this? It could be something Temptation. that the enemy is using to tempt you and distract you from the ultimate thing that you're supposed to be doing. Yeah. So again, is it right in your eyes or is it right in God's eyes? Mm -hmm. And that's the question that all of us that are followers of Jesus have to answer. Yeah. Amen. And it's that. That's it. Learn That's it. from Samson. Yes. Go read Judges 13 through 16 and, and find out. Look at all the ways that Samson went wrong, but yet it could have seemed right the whole time. Mm -hmm. And that's where the heart gets tricky because it can seem right. But is it though? Yeah, maybe you should think that in your head. This is good. But is it though? But, but is it though? And that's the <laughs> challenge. But thank you guys so much again for joining yeah. us today I, I hope that you receive something from this and, and i hope that you can you can leave this pod and and just be challenged and really ask the lord lord everything that i'm doing on a daily basis i know it seems right in my eyes but i need to know that it's right in your eyes as well mm -hmm. and i think that is where true breakthrough and and true abiding and true contentment really lands at mm -hmm. right there I know it might seem right but Lord I need to know that it's right with you that's the challenge yeah but I hope you guys enjoyed we'll see you here next time we'll see you then we'll see you later